is for algorithm. I want to do an A to Z of maths art and what better place to start than algorithmic art, which is where you decide a set of rules and then just let the beauty follow. I have to show you this piece from Barry Sipra, which I saw this year at Bridges Maths Art, because to be honest, when I walked in and first saw it on the wall, I kind of wondered why it was included in the exhibition. It looked to me just like a nice digital print of the Sierpinski carpet, which is a well-known fractal where you kind of divide a square up into nine parts and then just yoink the middle one out and then keep doing that over and over again, which is beautiful, but it is not groundbreaking. But that is not how this Serpinski carpet was created. Let's go on an adventure. When you are weaving, threads are going over and under and over and under, alternating. What Cipra and Zorn, the two artists and co-authors of this paper did, was borrow a tri-colouring technique from knot theory, another area of maths. So what are the rules of tri-colouring? There are two. One, if you have a thread and a thread of the same colour goes underneath it, nothing happens. Secondly, if you have a thread and a thread of a different colour goes underneath it, it changes to a third colour. And there are only three colours involved in this tricolouring technique. So then Barry set up a warp and a weave of cyclical colours. So I've used pink, purple, green, pink, purple, green going along. And you would expect that with that kind of cyclical starting point, you get a pattern like tartan or something like that. But what you actually end up with is this, which is not random, but it's not like anything anyone would have expected. I kind of see these like diagonal hatching areas. There's some sections where there's um, big patches of one color. Nobody saw that coming. And here, here's an extract from the actual paper because I just love that the way that Barry figured this out was actually hand drawing these and then eventually they moved to computer generating it. So to get this Serpinski carpet-ish thing, what they did was take a weaving where all of the colours are the same. If all of your warp and all of your weft is the same, using this tricolouring technique, your entire weaving will be the same. Then they just tweaked the first two. So the first one from the warp and the first one from the weft. The way I've done it is all green, but I've made the first one pink here and the first one pink here. And then again, you just let the algorithm do its thing. And this is what you end up with. So I can see kind of some cool patterns going on down here. And then there's this obvious large green patch. So the bit that I've drawn represents the very top left corner of this Serpinski carpet. You need to go through the tricoloring technique, but then where I've done pink and purple, they've been like, right, we'll just make those all purple. So it's threads that have been affected by the first two tweaks. And the cool thing is, Nobody knows why this has happened. Nobody knows why it is creating a Serpinski carpet-like picture. And they found that out just by doodling. And before everyone gets up in my comments being like, but why is this important and what's the use of it? One, maths doesn't always have to have a use. It can just be fun. But two, if we understood knot theory more, which we don't, then we could possibly find better ways of neutralizing viruses, which are essentially just big tangled knots.